Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, I'm gonna be continuing the build, continuing the build for the D-Max for the, the 12 volt all-in-one battery box. And in today's video, we're gonna be installing the Victron battery monitor. This is the BMV712. Let's get started. So if you've been following along with the build, oh yeah, HSP, Target Assist, they're working well, and you'll know, you'll know that we've been working on our all-in-one battery box. So step one is to get that out of there and over to there. And here we go. So I'm pretty stoked with how this thing has been going. It's it's been living in the back of the D-Max there for a little while now, and it's been on three, maybe four trips now. So kind of the missing ingredient for this is really trying to get a bit of a read on what's going on in here. This is where the Victron unit comes in. This is the BMV712. So basically I'm gonna be able to get a really good read on what's going on with the state of charge. I'm gonna be able to see what's going in, what's going out, what the fridge is drawing, what the soul is putting in, and all of the above. This does all of that through its smart shunt. And the other cool thing is it has, I don't know if you can see that, it has Bluetooth, which means of course, there's an app for that. That way I'll be able to be on a trip. I'll have the, it be in the D-Max, you know, the phone on the old quad lock type deal. And I can have the app on there. I could be driving along. This thing can be in the back, the red arc charging away, being a boss and keeping everything nice and topped up. And I'll be able to have the app on the phone from the Victron unit, seeing what's going on. So the kit is pretty straightforward, really. It, I mean, the nuts and bolts of it is you have your shunt. We have our ethernet cable that connects our actual monitor that gives us our readout of what the shunt is reading. We then have our shunt power and our temperature probe, which goes off the side here as well. And, and that's pretty much it. It all comes down to the wiring. So if we have a look at our particular setup here, it is going to be similar depending on where you're going to be putting this. So you can see one side is battery only and the other side is load and charger. So what this is doing is it is reading the current that flows between these two points. So when you're installing it, you want to basically put a single earth from one side to our battery and then everything off everything else on the other side. So in our case, being that we are using an auxiliary battery, our negative from the battery would go to this side of the shunt to the, to the battery only negative, and that is it. Everything else would then come down to our bus bar here and be connected to this side of the actual shunt. So we're gonna to have to do a bit of a rejig in here because we need to fit the shunt in and that's gonna to have to kinda of go in between. So we're gonna to wanna to run off here down to our shunt. Then we're gonna need another fat cable from said shunt across to our bus bar and then from our bus bar onto our negative for our fuse box just here, which will run the extra couple of accessories like it's gonna be running our, our USB plugs, accessory ports. So that way we kinda of need to shunt everything over. So we're gonna put our relay for our air compressor, move him over and use this bolt here so that this guy can sit in there first move this onto the bus bar and away we go. So our first step is to disconnect everything. We're gonna be disconnecting both negative and positive and removing our battery so we can get a bit more space. All right, our battery is out. We have our new smart shunt. Right about there, and on the far side of our battery board, it's nice and protected. And by putting it here, that way we can run that all the way around. So I'll get cracking on this boring stuff now. It's just unscrewing and re-screwing into place and check in in a second. And there we go, all nice and tidied up. Just kind of zapped everything or zipped everything together. We wanna to make sure that there is as much clearance as possible like we have here. Here's our BMV smart shunt. We then 
then have our wiring. So we are ready to reinstall the battery, but before we do, let's just step through what goes where. We have our smart shunt here, and this is the unit that all of the current that is going to be used off our system here, in our case, our lithium battery here, needs to be passed through this. So the easiest way to think about it is on the one side, on this case, the battery side, there should be a single cable going through to the negative terminal on our battery. So that's what this guy here is. And then on the other side, you wanna to connect to the load side, that is, you wanna connect all of your loads. So in our case, we're using our existing bus bar here, and all the negatives that we have in our system are located in the one spot there. And that way, what we're able to do is link that directly to our overall system negative. That's all then grounded properly, but then the current to the battery will go through here, through our shunt with all the measurements, and then through our thick cable here, which is good for 100 amps, to our battery itself. The same thing here, right? So we, we want all of our accessories, mainly these ports here, these guys here, the fan, etc. So once again, we have our fat negative going across here, 100 amps there again, and then our separate positive running back up here, uh, this one here which is going to ultimately then connect to the positive of our battery. Your system may be more complicated or less complicated or similar to this. Use the wiring diagrams that I've got on the screen. You can just sort of pause those. And I, I definitely recommend mapping out your system before you get stuck into this. The other thing to really bear in mind with these kinds of setups is being conscious of your total load. So all of these cables must be matched with a little bit of wiggle room to the total load that you've got hanging off it. So from here, once you've got at this stage and you're ready to go, the next part is just connect the extra uh, little bits and pieces that we need for the Victron unit. So that means we have our RJ5, uh, RJ45 connection. Uh, we're gonna need exactly bugger all of this because we're literally gonna be running connected in here around our battery tray and just to the corner here. Now, as far as where this guy's gonna live, I, I think I'm actually gonna put it as high as I can on the side here, just like that, because I can still get to it from the side of the D-Max when I'm reaching in. It's just gonna give it nice and flush sort of mounted on the side. It's gonna give it that little bit more protection. The next step is to drill using a hole saw of uh, this size you want to stick that in there, drill the hole and, uh, and install your monitor. And there we go, one 54 millimeter hole. We have our a unit and it's gonna sit in there just like that. So pretty stoked with that. That application is gonna work well. We then have our locking ring, which just goes on the back there and screws this down tight. So that's the next step is to lock that into place and then come in the top here and connect up our cables. So there's our RJ45 connection. I've just bundled this. You probably could use a shorter one of those if you have one lying around, but I may change this at some point in the future. So I figure it's got a nice little home in there. It sits in there quite nicely. And our connection that goes to our battery terminal is still there, ready to go. And we've got a little bit of wiggle room to connect into this guy. Now, when it comes to your power connectors, it may differ here. If you've got the temp sensor that came with your kit, then happy days, one of these will go to your temp sensor, which is your B2. B1 will be, in our case, because we're running just a single battery. I don't actually have the temp sensor, unfortunately, I'll order one of those. When I do, one of them will go to the temp sensor connected to the positive terminal. It's kind of like an inline one. And the other one will actually power up our smart shunt. So same thing, plugged into the B1 and down here, ready to connect to our positive terminal. So battery back in now, all sorted there, and I've connected up all of our different cables as we talked through there before. So here's our main negative earth that goes down and to our new smart shunt living down in there. All of these connections are just the standard ones that we had when we did the install of the air compressor. So that's all just put back into place. Make sure everything is nice and tight, and then pop your covers back on. Same goes for our distribution blocks here. We can put all of those covers back on there as well so that they're nice and protected. And then same for our bus bar. 
And with this part all installed, all buttoned up, the only other thing we've got to do is connect up our monitor. And there we go. So that's sort of the initial startup details that you need to set. We need to set the type of battery and the battery capacity, those kinds of things. Now I'm not gonna to get too carried away on doing a guide on the settings and all of those kinds of things because there's stacks to do in this that you can sort of customize depending on your setup, what alarms you want, all sorts of stuff. There is gonna be a video in the top corner there. You can check out a secondary sort of follow-up part two of this video, which will go through how to change all of the settings and everything that this thing's capable of via the Bluetooth app and then also on the display. To get us out of trouble though, we just need to press any button here. Once you're at that sort of battery capacity scrolling, press any button, it will stop scrolling. The default will be 200 amp hours. And then basically you wanna put in what size battery that you have. Now, in our case, we've got a 130 amp hour battery. So we can select that and then follow your nose there, selected, and then hitting your st uh, setup, it'll take you to this screen, which is a, an auxiliary input uh, setting uh, screen. So this is where you wanna set, depending on what you, your application is. Now in our case, we just wanna use this for monitoring. So we just wanna use our plus and minus to press start there once we've got that selected. So that's the one we want. We can highlight that, press our plus or our minus, and there we are we are ready to use. We can see there's our unit. We just need to touch one of the buttons to turn the display on. And the quick overview is that we just need to press the plus and minus button. That will give us our state of charge, which is this one here. All of this setup will be in the other video showing you how to do all of this, but this is what it looks like once it is all set up. There's our current battery voltage. It is quite high. I've just had it on charge. So there's a, there's a chunk of surface charge there for this lithium battery. Then this is our amp rating, and that's gonna show a minus or a plus, depending on what's being fed into the battery from solar or the Red Arc BCDC will display there. Same thing in watts. This is your how many amp hours that you've actually used through the system, which is pretty cool. State of charge there again and this one this is pretty cool this is basically telling you how much time you've got left at your current usage that's something that will constantly calculate for you and will take into account the state of charge so the power going back into the battery as well as the power going back out so i'll do a quick little demo if we go across to our amps for example and i'll flick the compressor on you can see there our peak draw was about that 30 amps there's our half an amp for our fan that's running that we talked about when we did the install video. You can check that one out. But that's that's what we're constantly drawing. And then if I go down that end and get that compressor going, you'll see this spike back up. So that's it running non-stop. You can see we're drawing about 20 amps, about 280 watts. And that's how many amp hours we've used so far state of charge and how many hours we've got left so if we kept doing this non-stop that's constantly calculating and we'll get more accurate over time so there we go we drop back down on our actual read to just the half an amp for the fan that's still running then if we turn it off we'll drop back down to no draw so there you go guys this was the install of the victron bmv 712 they're a pretty cool unit and particularly that app is going to be awesome that i can have the phone set up in the dmax in the in the pilot seat over there have it bluetooth connected and i'll be able to see exactly what's going on in the background see the bcdc amps and everything charging the battery and when i'm at camp as well i can sort of keep an eye on what's going on states of charge all that nerdy stuff without needing to get carried away pulling the actual box out of the D-Max. Now we are getting close to the end of this series, this sort of mini series of the all-in-one DIY battery box for the D-Max. We're about to move on to some other mods predominantly around power, engine power, which is going to be cool. We're going to be sort of powering it up and then also some reliability mods as well. So look out on the channel for those to be coming up next. So of course, 
Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're keen to see that content and all the other DMAX content we're almost up to, would you believe, we're almost up to 20 videos now on the install. So check out the playlist if you're keen to see more there. If you do subscribe or if you're already subscribed, make sure you hit the little bell because what that does is gives you a little ding, gives you a little notification when a new video is released to, to let you know that, that there's a new one out to, uh, to go and check it out. Channel membership is also a thing. You can check out those details down below. I'll have a link in the description or you can click the old join button if you want to find out more. Massive thanks to these legends here who have already jumped on board. Big appreciation to the support you're giving. And of course, as always, guys, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.